Greetings, pilgrims, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. And today, we're going to be looking at creating a Carpathian Burl pattern here. Now, what is Carpathian Burl, you may be asking? Well, according to my research, this is commonly found in Western Europe in the Carpathian Mountain Range. It's a type of wood, typically an elm, and it creates these very interesting patterns. And then it's used a lot in architecture, especially in more fancy homes, you know, higher priced homes, and it has this central mirrored effect to it. So we're going to go over how to create this, including with a, uh, a bit of a sheen to it here. And I'm going to show you, step through with you, how we create the pattern. Okay, so let's jump right in. So as you can see, here's our grid, our graph rather, not too bad. Uh, we do have a bit of a tree up here, but it's it looks scarier than it is. So let's go ahead and step through. So we're going to begin with the initial pattern base. And this is using a clouds one into a blur high, high quality grayscale. As you can see here, this is just to take some of our pattern and get rid of some of the finer noise. We don't want that right at the moment. Then we're going to throw it into a histogram range. And my values here are 0 0.14, 0 0.8. And this gives me this very nice, almost marbleish looking kind of base to start with. So that's really good. Now, let's go ahead and add in our wooden pattern. So we're going to take the wood fibers one, which comes with Substance Designer. And I'm going to put that in a blend and add some of 0.76. And this gives me a kind of a combination between the two. I'm getting those more softer forms, but I'm getting my definite wood grain look in here. So that's going quite well. I'm going to throw this into a levels and clamp the values and play with them until we get something kind of like this. What I'm looking for is a, a wide range. So I have dark darks and then I have these white whites here. And what we're doing is we're taking the tops of these whites. We want to take those out and separate them. Okay, so now we're going to shoot this up into these two patterns, but we'll come back to that in a second. So just hold that thought. So what we're going to do is take this level and we do a color to mask and choose the white with a mask range of 0.25 and I'm isolating the highest points. Then we throw this into a shape stroke grayscale. And this might be a little difficult to see, but the color here is white and my mask is white. It doesn't matter what the mask color, we're only using the output here. But my width is only a 0 0.08. And the reason is I just want to take my highest high points and add a little bit of a, an outside edge to them, make them a little bit more globule like so we don't have so many sharp edges. Okay? Then we're going to warp that. And we're warping here with a 0.05. Now let's look at what our warp consists of. So our warp over here is a Gaussian spots one. And if you're following along, my disorder here is 47.04. Then I'm going to throw that through a levels. And what I really wanted to do here was pull up the base. So then what I have is these bright spots here and then a quick fall off to a relatively high value as far as it's closer to white than it is to black. So we took out that black, black background here and sort of raised the, you know, the floor of the values, if you will, up a bit. The transform 2D here, as you see our rectangle kind of shape here, I did a couple of uh, divide by twos to sort of spread out the values more. And then a bit of a rotation and a scale, just trying to kind of give us a overall pattern here. What we're looking for are these high points here and almost like little packing popcorn kind of shape is what I wanted for the warping because then when I warp our result here I start to get some very nice very creative shapes here things that look like they're blending and, and bleeding around one another and you'll see in our final result here some of that works out really nicely in here so that's what we're doing there then I throw this into a blend here and the blend I'm not really doing anything with it I'm just using it to take the warp and then isolate it into its own state that we can then use in the transforms that we're about to do because for some reason directly from the warp wasn't working so that's all this does but you can actually see it a bit better here as it's i guess finalizing the layer stack here even though it does still have transparency you can see the background here has been isolated okay so now we go into our patterns here all right so here we're taking from two different points because what we're doing is we need to warp further warp our high points, which are going to become our knots. And then that's down here. And then up here, we're going to warp the main wood grain. I actually forgot to, forgot to name this. There we go. So this is our, our knots. 
warp, okay? And then up here is our wood grain warping. And what we're doing here is a bit of a tree. So this first node in the, in the order here, if you will, is a histogram scan. And what I'm doing is I'm taking always from the same position, but I'm changing my contrast. So you'll notice this is 0.73, as is that one. And then I go into 0 0.51, 0 0.25, 0, and then this is a 0 0.06. And the reason being is I'm trying to get different layers. You, you can actually see it better uh, up here. If you look here, I'm getting the whites. And then as I go up the chain, the values are shrinking inward. It might be hard to see on the, on the video here. Zero, yeah, the values are shrinking inward. And by then taking those values, and now here we're doing a color to mask to, to give our, us, ourselves a mask here. We're taking just that color. But what we're doing here is the blend is the important part. So this blend is taking a slightly higher version of itself with the slightly lower version of itself with a subtract. And you'll see what we get here are these very broken up edges of just where the two shapes have been slightly cut out. Imagine two circles that are almost exactly the same size but the one is slightly smaller. So if I cut the smaller out from the bigger, I should get just a bit of an outline. But then using this color to mask and clamping a little bit from here, what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of just a little bit around some of those edges. And so by using that as the mask, I get a dotted and broken up line instead of it being a sharp solid line. So I'll show you some of these as we go up. You'll see they get more and more full. There you go, like that. Then I'm gonna blend these on top of their respective lower neighbors here again using a subtract and you'll see this is what we're getting these different patterns of various colors uh, it's all black and white mode but you're getting different uh, values then we're going to blend it again with the resulting neighbors of those two with a max lighten and now you see what we're starting to get here we're getting these jagged lines which now have a variety of values along the line in kind of a semi-random pattern as far as you know, highlight, darker, darkest, that kind of thing. So these are all max lighten as we go down across here and you see we get different patterns. Now one more time I'm combining, just combining at the end. And this is what we end up with is this sort of nice outline lines around these shapes. But the outlines themselves, these borders, have been broken up and kind of twisted around and just sort of randomized. And then we're going to use that as our warp to our original wood grain thing here, okay? And let's take a look at what that's doing for us. If you look here, it's sort of breaking up right along those lines where we have those lines. Perfect, okay. And we're gonna combine that with up here. Let's take a look. This is the exact same setup. So we're getting more and more values or fewer and fewer as you go up or down. And then here, when we blend in with our subtract, you'll see what we're getting. We're starting to get those lines, okay? in there and then we'll go down the tree here we start to combine start to combine and as we work our way down we end up with a nice breakup here very nice breakup and then we're going to warp again from the same point and when we combine these warps this is what we get now it doesn't look like much just yet but we're, we're going to add some more but what we've done now is we've warped in two different re respective areas the first area we warped we're warping on the knots, and then the other is warping just around the knots. So that's what these two areas mean. Okay, so let's jump back down and keep going through our pattern. So we've warped our high points, and then we're going to convert to a grayscale here. And here we start to warp the actual wood based upon our previous inputs. So here we're taking this guy, and we're going to warp using our these knots from the high point. So we're going to convert, do an invert, and use that as our warp. And you see here we're starting to get a better defining. This is going to be our basis. And then we put our other section we just made on top of that. We do a little bit of a blur. You actually can't see it too well here because it gets really blurred out. But when I put the final warp on, you'll see here's what we've been working towards. Okay, look at how good this is looking. We're definitely getting this pattern. <clears throat> Pardon me, we're getting that graininess around it so it still looks like wood and we're getting the knots, and then we're getting that twisted nature. And as we layer all these things on top of each other, it doesn't look quite too good in the middle here, but when you see the end result, you'll see that all these steps are important. Okay, so from here, we're combining the wood 
warp with the not warp. So you see here, this is our previous, and we're gonna put that on top, and it's breaking that pattern up even further. So, very good, and that's pulling from up here, this combination we did earlier. You can see that gets put on top of here, and our mask for this is actually being pulled from over here, this grayscale conversion. So only in these white areas are we doing that, and these white areas are built off of our high points, okay? So these are the knots. So that tells us that just put this over top of where the knots should be, put the knots in amongst our wood pattern. So see, it's starting to come together. So now, this is a knot outline build. So you see these, these colored lines here, these outlines. This is what we're gonna use to add just a little bit of a bump to just the outer edges of the knots because these do tend to grow a little bit of a border to them and I wanted to try and replicate that. So here we go, so the add knot outline. It might be a little difficult to see here, but it shows up in the final image a lot better, and you can play with these values. For now, I am multiplying by a 0.4. I'm taking this, and you can play with this color value. I picked just something to try to prove the effect, and I think it turned out pretty well, so I'm actually kind of happy with it, so I'm just gonna keep it, but be, feel free to play with it and you know make some changes, see what you can come up with. That definitely just adds a little bit more variety in there. Now, this is a very, very slight blur to remove some artifacting. You can see the artifacting in here. You can see these tiny little pixelated edges. We don't really want that. So I'm blurring by just a 0.1, a very subtle value, just to remove that, that little bit of artifacting as you get too close to it. All right, and now that we're all done with the pattern, it's time to mirror it. So the mirroring is quite easy. We're gonna do a transform 2D. And this here, we are transforming and flipping. And then here I'm using just a simple blend and cramp, uh, clamping in the right value to 0.5. And I'm doing the same thing here with the left value to 0.5. And then just combining the two. And that gives us a nice center mirror. There we go. Now we're down to our final uh, outputs and this is quite simple. Uh, this node here is to do your color grading to actually add your colors into it because we've been using a black and white grayscale map the whole time. So this gradient here I just chose from a picture of this type of wood and chose a nice gradient and then I altered the values a bit here and played with the values to make sure that the highlights were the brightest color and then my dark spots got the darkest values and then just played in between creating different layers, different you know shelves of where these colors appear. So that's our final color output there. Our normal map is actually driven by this final output here but it's at a very, very low value because we want to create the idea of a sheen or a shellac on top of this. So we don't really want a whole lot of normal detail to this because it would be too bumpy and it would look wrong, like they haven't shaved it down enough. Now this value might be a little too much or a little too little for you, you can change it here. Uh, if I lower this even further down to like a 0.4, you'll start to see that um, some of the lowest points drop out and then the high, only the high points remain and you might want that, it depends on how close you're gonna to get to your wood. Here with my uh, previewer here, you can actually see the height information, but I don't think I'm gonna use that uh, in Unreal. I'm just gonna use the ability to have the highlight travel across the surface, and it gives the impression of like a shellac as being applied to this. Okay, so now we're down to our roughness and our metallic and our height. So from here, I took our final output and created a levels. I just started clamping the values, playing with them a bit. And then these are blends with a default color. You can choose whatever color you like. And blending those together, this is at a 0.89, just a straight copy, to sort of blend and blur things out. And then I blur it just a little bit, and that becomes my roughness. And then here, our metallic, it really shouldn't be metallic at all, really. But um, I do have just a little bit of a value in there just to kind of help sell the shellac effect a little bit. Even though it is technically wood, it's not metallic at all. And then here for this levels, I thought this is a pretty good information for my height, but I wanted to blur it quite a bit so that I don't get such high peaks and low valleys with this. And I might even blur it a bit further because I really want it to be basically smooth. But then that becomes our height information. So with all of that, it's not really too bad at all. I tried to do a much better job here for you um, isolating and really labeling everything so you know exactly what's going on 
at each point. And I really hope that was helpful. And I appreciate you sticking with me through through all this up here. This was a lot of experimentation. If you know a better way to do this, please let me know. I was just playing around and trying to get the shape. Uh, a buddy of mine has a 3D job where he generates um, really fancy, high-end, expensive kitchens and things in, in VR. And he asked me how to do this type of wood. And so I went ahead and did it and sent it to him. And, you know, he was, of course, grateful. And, you know, he got what he needed, which is perfect. Uh, but I said, you know what? This is an interesting wood. Uh, let's go ahead and share it with you guys. So I wanted to show you how I went about creating this. And, of course, uh, if you don't like this particular pattern, we can always go all the way to the clouds in the beginning and just change your random seed. I happen to be on a random seed of two for this example. And that has created this particular pattern but of course you can change that and that would propagate through the entire chain and give you a completely new output which is the amazing thing to this software so that's what we have for you guys this week and i hope that you have enjoyed very much so and uh, i will see you guys in the next one so until then keep practicing get better and i'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues <laughs>